Hello and welcome to The Bad Spot and the Iron Sworn combat example that accompanies the Combat 101. Now it's important to take a bit of time to discuss the original Iron Sworn separately because there are some small but important differences between the two systems. Firstly, the moves are slightly different. Enter the fray, strike, clash and battle are all present and virtually identical, with the exception of a miss on enter the fray making you pay the price, which is pretty appropriate for how hard this game can be sometimes. But in addition, regular adventure moves such as face danger and secure advantage can be used in a combat context. These were replaced by react under fire and gain ground in Starforged. There's also another move called Turn the Tide, which is mechanically quite unusual because it's one of the few moves in the game that you can only use once per encounter. It's a one and done move used when you're really up against it and desperately need to turn things around. The move End the Fight is used in place of Take Decisive Action. It's mechanically nearly identical and serves the same purpose but just has a different name. Also, you'll notice there is no mention in these moves of being in control or being in a bad spot. In the original Iron Sworn, this mechanic is simply called initiative, and you either have it or you don't. Secondly, and this is perhaps the biggest difference between combat in Iron Sworn and Iron Sworn Starforged, is that combat in the original Iron Sworn is not focused on objectives. When you enter the fray, the progress tracks you make represent the enemies themselves, and each time you fill them in, you do it differently. Unlike in Starforged, you only mark progress when you strike or clash, and when you do so, it's relative to how much harm you do. When you inflict harm, you do two harm for an armed strike, and one harm for an unarmed strike. So for a troublesome foe, you will mark three progress per harm. So inflicting harm on a troublesome foe whilst armed with a weapon, you will fill out six boxes, so slightly different. And lastly, and this is less a difference to combat specifically, and more just a general difference to how the two games work, is that momentum is slightly used differently. In Starforged, you burn momentum and replace the action dice with your current momentum value, but in the original Iron Sworn, burning your momentum cancels any challenge dice that are lower than your momentum level. So if you see that in this example and are wondering why it's different, that's why. Anyway, to the example. Now, I don't want to waste any more of your time by rambling on, so I asked Steve Morrison of the Errant Adventures podcast to come on and help me out. Say hello, Steve. Hello. Steve is playing Elvar Wolffriend, a skirmisher making his way through the deep wilds, searching for his friend Taz. He's been travelling for days through dense forest, following a set of mysterious tracks that may be related to his friend's disappearance. Elvar Wolfrend makes his way through the deep wilds, searching for his friend Taz. He's been traveling for days through dense forest, following a set of mysterious tracks that may be related to his friend's disappearance. Leaning on his spear, he spends a few moments considering those tracks. They've vanished into a thicket, and he doubts that Taz would have gone in there without leaving some sort of trace. While he's ruminating on his next steps, he hears a rustling in the thicket. As an iron sworn, well accustomed to trouble, he drops into a stance and readies his spear. To his surprise, a snarling elder boar emerges from the thick underbrush. Elvar's heart stops as he faces off against the great beast. But then he sees that it is already wounded. Could those wounds have been caused by Taz? He needs to get a closer look, and it looks like he's going to have that opportunity as the boar charges. It's time to enter the fray. First things first, we have to set a rank for this fight. According to the foes section of the rulebook, an elder beast is an extreme challenge. But since it's already wounded, I think we can reduce the difficulty. But how wounded is it? Let's ask the oracle. Is this wounded elder boar a formidable foe? Let's call it 50-50. No, it's not formidable. That means we'll set the rank to just dangerous. Maybe one of its great tusks has been shorn off in addition to whatever other wounds it suffered. That gives Elvar a chance to defeat this mighty beast. Now that we've set the rank, we're going to roll Enter the Fray. 
This seems pretty clear that we're facing off against our foe, so we'll roll plus heart, which is plus two for Elvar. A weak hit. That gives us a choice between taking the initiative or taking plus two momentum. Since I've already got six momentum, I'm going to choose the initiative. The Elder Boar emerges from the thicket and charges, but Elvar isn't surprised. His spear is at the ready, and he drives his spear at the charging creature. That means a strike, and since we're in close quarters, we'll be rolling plus iron, which is plus three for Elvar. Let's roll the dice and see how this goes. Another weak hit. Well, according to the move, that means we get to inflict our harm and then lose the initiative. Since this is a dangerous foe, each harm fills two boxes of progress on our progress track. Elvar's spear deals two harm, so that's going to be four boxes of progress so far. Let's envision this. Elvar strikes with a fury, but it's not enough to skewer it as the spear glances off the creature's thick hide. The elder boar snarls and closes the distance, tusks flashing. The ground shakes as it approaches, and Elvar can smell his own death. Having lost his distance advantage and facing a gruesome end, Elvar is going to try and gain some space. He dances to the side as the boar charges. That sounds like a face danger with Edge to me, which isn't great for Elvar because he only has a plus one for Edge. But I think it's what fits the narrative, so we're just going to trust the dice. Oh no, it's a miss. We have to pay the price. The obvious outcome is that he gets hit by the flailing tusk and takes harm. In a different circumstance, I'd roll on the pay the price table for a more narrative consequence. But this seems like the simplest answer. Because this elder boar is only dangerous, I think he gets hit by the stump of that broken tusk. It hurts, but it doesn't gore him, and Elvar only takes two harm. That reduces his health down to three, and we have to make the Endure Harm move. And we get a strong hit. Looking at the Endure Harm move, I've got two options on a strong hit. And since I don't want to sacrifice any momentum right now, I'm going to embrace the pain and gain one momentum, taking Elvar's total up to seven. And because any strong hit in combat grants the initiative, Elvar is back in charge of this fight. So he tries to spin out of the way of the charging tusk, but he doesn't quite make it. The hard bone of the shorn tusk clips his side and a jagged fragment cuts through his tunic. He staggers a little bit, but stays on his feet. The boar's charge carries it away from him, and by the time it stops and turns to set itself for another charge, Elvar has his spear out and braced. The boar must be able to smell the blood because it just snorts and charges. Because Elvar has the skirmisher asset, he's going to try and use the spear to stymie the boar's charge. I'll be rolling face danger plus iron, and a hit will give me a bonus to my next strike or clash. Here we go with plus three. Oh, another miss. But wait, with my seven momentum, I can turn that into a weak hit. Maybe I should save this momentum, but that plus one to clash might just be worth it. Yeah, I'm going to burn the momentum and reset it back to two. That weak hit gives me plus one to my next clash, but I still have to resolve the weak hit on face danger first, which is just a loss of one on one of my tracks. I don't want to hammer my health down, so I think I'll apply that minus one to spirit, dropping it to four, and we have to endure stress. Rolling at plus four, because our spirit is definitely more than our heart of two, gives us a weak hit. All right, Elvar presses on, but loses the initiative. So the boar charges, and Elvar uses his spear to slow the beast down. He was hoping it would simply impale itself and be done with it. But the creature seems to have some wiles as it skirts around the spear and tries another quick charge. Elvar almost misses the fancy porcine footwork and hesitates as doubt fills his mind. Can he defeat this creature? He shakes away those thoughts and focuses on the oncoming boar, readying his own quick thrust at its flanks. It's time to clash, as the boar has the initiative. 
but because of our weak hit with Skirmisher, Elvar still gets to add plus one to this move. With his Iron, because this is definitely close quarters, we roll at plus four. A strong hit! That gives us the initiative back, and I can either deal an extra harm or take a momentum. That's a no-brainer for me. I'm taking the extra harm. So with the two harm from the spear plus one for the strong hit, that will be six progress on our track, taking us to a full ten boxes of progress. Since I have the initiative after that last strong hit, I'm going to end the fight and roll the challenge dice against my progress of ten. And it's another strong hit! Let's envision how this fight ends. The boar, thinking itself tricky, tries to dance past Elvar's spear, but Elvar has hunted many a boar in his time and isn't fooled. He drives his spear into the boar's shoulder and it squeals. The beast pulls away and looks like it might be trying to decide between flight and a last attempt to gore him. The blood pouring from its wound tells Elvar everything he needs to know about this creature's chance of survival if it flees. With an almost sad sigh, Elvar spins the spear in his hands and drives it through the creature's heart, ending its suffering. Pulling his spear free, he crouches down and lays a hand on the boar's side, raising his eyes to the forest canopy to give thanks to the land. Then he sets to work inspecting the wounds not caused by his spear. They do look like they could have been caused by Taz's daggers. Maybe if he follows the boar's trail, he'll find some clue as to where his missing friend might be. In the meantime, he begins cutting away at the hide and meat. Surely even the missing Taz would not begrudge Elvar Wolfrend the time to take what had been given. So that was Combat in Ironsworn, and I hope you could see that there are some differences, and they're pretty minor, but they do have an impact, and I thought that's why it was worth discussing separately. Big thank you to Steve for helping me out with this video. Uh, you can check out links to his stuff in the description below. Down there, you'll also find details of my brand new Patreon, where you can get early access to videos, exclusive behind-the-scenes content, and your name on screen like these fine people. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe if you've not done so already, and click the little bell icon to be notified when the next video drops. Until next time, it's farewell and safe passage.